now. Sorry that we're starting late. This is usually Simon's thing, but uh, you know, since we're not doing any, an anthology film this time, I think I have to actually introduce the film. So, um, like this, this film has been a really long, like crazy journey for me. Uh, it's been filled with a lot of tooth pain. Some of you may know that I missed the last public screening of this film due to some crazy tooth surgery. Um, and that was very frustrating for me because, uh, you know, this film was made to be seen with an audience and I, I, I've only really seen this film with an audience like twice, uh, unless you count test screenings. Um, and so I'm, I'm super stoked to be here with you guys tonight and to watch this movie with you guys with this huge glass of red wine. I don't, know if, I don't know if this is like the perks of being a director or something. You're actually making up for the drink that Simon had to drink on behalf of you winning the award at Fantastic. Good point. <laughs> 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 so you need to start that right now. Chuck, yeah. Chuck. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we're just, thank you all for coming out tonight, and we're so grateful to South by Kravitz and for Lionsgate for, you know, putting this all together. Um, yeah, we're going to get We're going to get into this story. And you know, Chinese coolness and uh, et cetera, et cetera. We, you know. Yeah, we have the rest of the cast here for, a, or well, most of the rest of the cast here for a QA afterwards. If you, we understand it's late, we understand it's running late, but if you stick around, we'll try as best as we can to be entertaining. And if you don't, we won't yell at you. No, we'll be cool. Bye bye. Thank you all. I hope you enjoyed the film. Brooke, for your next, you can do a quick QA with them. Woo! So uh, let's go ahead and bring Adam Wingard up. We have Joe Swarbrick. We have Amy J. Bowen in the house tonight. We have Sharni Vincent with us. And Ty West is here as well. Finally, Nicholas Tucci. So, so Adam, my first question is, um, my first exposure to your work was Pop Skull. And it is a long way from Pop Skull to this movie and sensibility. Can you talk about um, how you and Simon came to this idea, and then also how you, uh, how you work with it? Because it's, it is a really different feeling film for you. Well, first off, nobody in this room has any fucking idea what Pop Skull is. Uh, <laughs> that was my first film, and it was a film that I did, you know, based on me and my friend Lane, who plays the Fox Mass Killer in them. In this film, uh, we, we just robo tripped a lot. I don't know if you know what that is. We drink a lot of uh, cough medicine. Anyways, uh, that was where I got my start into the world of filmmaking. And um, yeah, and then going into the, what was the fucking question? Uh, so, how do you get from that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, going to that one, okay. I met Simon because of my friend Evan Katz. Cheap Girl. He has a movie really here called uh, Cheap Girl. Awesome. We went to film school together, but Evan was writing for Fangoria, and um, and we went to the set of Simon's film Dead Birds. Uh, yeah. Also, unlikely that you know that. It yeah, is. it was shot in Alabama, and uh, so I met Evan actually through pretending to be as a part of Fangoria, which Evan actually was, but I was just kind of hanging out with him. And we met through that, and uh, yeah, they came to set on like the worst night ever. Like it was like this like four hour wait for the special effect that was just pathetic. And then, like, it burst out someone's stomach, and it was such a disappointment. We had, and, and Evan and Adam and I were like a video village, and we all just like looked at each other and started laughing, and everyone was like really serious. And then we just wandered off somewhere and started Yeah, it was really funny because, like, it was such a disaster to Completely. watch their film, like, their special effect totally fuck up. And I'd just done this other movie where I'd had the same experience, and Evan was, I mean, and Simon was just laughing his ass off with us, and I was like, oh, he gets it. You know, he sees that this is a disaster. I, I didn't get like, it. I just figured that guy was fucked. <laughs> like, I just figured, like, I just was like, gonna go home and die. Yeah, so fast forward, basically what happened was, is, uh, I didn't have a career, Simon's career was going nowhere. Absolutely. And, <laughs> and, uh, and we needed to do something, and, uh, that's how we ended up working together on Home Way to Die, because it was like, Simon was like, hey, I like Pop Skull, and I was like, hey, I like your writing. And we are like, okay, we're, yeah, this, this will work out, you know, and then we did that. And that movie's like a real bummer to really watch with an audience, you know, oh, man, man. you just kind of sit there and it's like, you know, it's really sad and really depressing sorry. and you don't know if people hate it or like it. And so going, going from that film, 
we were like, let's do something that like actually is fun and it's like something that well, we, I think we wanted to return to our roots because well, you know when you get into filmmaking, you're not thinking like, hey, I want to do like depressing fucking movies, you know? Like, like, <laughs> no, that's like, how you try filmmaking when you fail. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Then you, you don't have any money to make real movies, and, and you're, you're just, like, how about that? You're so, just drunk all the time. But no, like I mean, the thing about Horror Boy to Die is it was basic, uh, like a sad indie drama. But because it had some genre elements, it was at a bunch of genre festivals. So we got to see audience after audience come out of the movie, like totally disappointed. <laughs> and we were like, well, what could we in theory make that would slightly enlighten these people? And Adam was like, how about a home invasion thriller? I enjoy those. And I was like, but haven't all of those been kind of like in the same thing that like Michael Haneke parodied in like 1997? And um, he was like, shut up, you. And I was like, all right. <laughs> I mean, basically, I just told Simon that I really loved the first, like, seven minutes of Scream. And, like, we could do a movie that felt like that for, like, a whole film, you know? And then Simon came with something that's, like, totally fucking different. Well, I never, you know, I was like, Scream, I'll, I'll look it up. Um, <laughs> you know, like, and, and, you know, but all I had uh, at my home was, like, an old VHS copy of Bring a Baby. So I was like, okay, all right, all right, this must be kind of like Scream. I'll, I'll write it up for a version of this. I mean, that's how it goes. Uh, one of the things I really <laughs> is we, we're, apparently we successfully answered that question. <laughs> Thank you. Drew. Did you guys see that big glass of wine that I had before I came up on stage? Yeah, it's not here anymore, so it's like. The point is, Roxanne Benjamin, producer of VHS, brought him another one. Wait, 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 you had alcohol? That explains everything. Um, one of the things I love about the casting of this is the way you use um, other directors in the, in the roles. And I, I think Joe, you have a lot of fun in the part, and uh, I think they make great use of you. And Ty, you get to uh, die memorably. <laughs> and uh, and there's there's even more filmmakers hidden in the movie if you know who they are. But it's it's great, and I like the, the sense that there is a community between you guys. Um, can you talk about casting in the film and working with them both here and then in the other places where you guys have played? Uh, well, right before doing this movie, I I worked with uh, Swanberg on um, a bunch of movies. We we shot a whole bunch of movies over in Chicago and all over the place, and. We would do these things in like about five or six days, and we just shot a lot of them. And you know, we kind of like I, we kind of got used to being coming from this like low budget world where you're like, well, you can't afford like SAG actors and stuff like that. So for the most part, you know, like the most trustworthy people are other directors uh, because they know how fucked up and hard it is. And um, you know, and so you know, going into this, I'd already been so familiar with Joe. I basically lived with you for like you know almost a year. You know, like while his wife was pregnant and stuff. And, um, and so like we were really familiar with each other and it was kinda like this fucking that sounds weird, I don't know. Uh, no, no, no. So like it was like, you know, going into this, you know, like uh, you know, I, I just knew, you know, to to just unleash Joe in this thing and like let him and AJ kind of figure it out and you know, whatever. There actually wasn't much of a screw. It was just like like Adam does scary stuff right on a cocktail napkin. Well, no, like, I mean, to, like, to Joe's credit, like, I mean, like, that whole, like, dinner table scene between him and Ty was basically them just, like, like, I mean, because that movie is definitely, I mean, that scene, I think, maybe, like, this room might be one of the main places in the planet that would actually get the inside joke of that. And I do like the fact that Joe, like, even though in the script it's, like, it's written as uh, Tariq, Joe specifically pronounces it Tyreek during that scene. And it's, uh, and it, we also have like, Larry Fessenden and, and uh, two other filmmakers who have films in this festival, uh, Amy Simons and Calvin Reader, obviously. Uh, and some oh, of you guys anything, I'm just not. Yeah, this is, uh, I think you were saying point on the rails here. Whatever. I'm sorry, whatever. Well, <laughs> <laughs> AJ, you know, we talked about the fact that the, a lot of this was you guys working with the characters and, and building things on the fly. This builds to a pretty intense slice of you at the end of the film, where you can really carry the weight of, of landing this thing and explaining a lot of what we've seen. Um, can you talk about shooting something like that and realizing that you're kind of tying the movie together there for the audience as you're doing it? That's what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Apologies. Uh, I'm pretty sure that monologue is why I play Crispin. Um, because, um, and I, I think Simon said as much, he's like, okay, I'm gonna have this really long monologue where we wrap it up and have the exposition. What actor do I know that is dumb enough to do that? <laughs> we'll get it. So, um, so yeah, we uh, that actually shot in, in terms of the order for me of the movie at the very end. 
So I think they were kind enough to give me a couple days off before it. And uh, I spend it in an Apocalypse Now style, sort of drunken stupor staring in a mirror, trying to learn it. And see, when we'd done A Horrible Way to Die, Simon had given us a lot of liberties uh, with the dialogue and, and takes. We'd sort of start big and, and with a lot of talking, and we sort of started whittling down and getting back to the, to the point of the script. So at this one, I thought it was really important that I say everything exactly as Simon wrote, and then I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna add some shit too. And uh, we talked about it, and we were getting ready to break it up, and I was really nervous about doing it, so I was like, can we just try it in one take? And then we did it, and then on the first take, actually I think it was a rehearsal, Sharni started laughing at me halfway through, and that was before I even got to the engagement stuff. <laughs> so I wasn't very confident about it. <laughs> But it, 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 we got there. Yeah, I mean, like, after we, we uh, did this film, um, I realized that, like, like we had a certain crutch that we'd started with Horrible Way to Die, where, like, all of our films end, I don't know if you've seen A Horrible Way to Die, but, like, it, all of our films basically end with AJ giving a monologue that sort of explains the movie, you know? So this, hope, this will be the last film that AJ shows up at the end of the movie and actually explains the plot. <laughs> I don't but think he, he does it so well, so, I mean, Charlie, you fit into a nice tradition here of the last girl in a, in a horror film. Can you talk about um, the physical side of the role and what you were asked to do and shooting it in a, a environment like this where there's so much invention going on, what you were able to bring to it as well? Um, I, you know, I've always grown up a very physical person, just, I mean, you know, was a swimmer and a dancer growing up and, and um, physicality and, and things like that is something that I look for in a role. So when I read the script, I read the character of Erin and it was a role that I really wanted to portray and work on and uh, we were fortunate enough to have Clayton Barber from, you know, an incredible stunt company that came in and, and was able to work wonders with, with us and uh, he had me, you know, doing all sorts of training from, you know, boxing and martial arts to just reflex training and ducking sort of getting everything tight and um, it was just a real pleasure to work with him. I'm one of those actors that get bored just turning up to set and just delivering lines. I like to be doing more than that and being physical and if there's knife training involved then that's fantastic for me. I love it. Um, Shawnee gets really bored on set if she's not like jumping around and rolling yeah. and stuff. And yeah. You could like totally see it too. So I, my, my thing for the, this shoot was the fire poker, and we never actually got to really use it, but I, I do grab the fire poker in the beginning, but I would just walk around the set all night and just be twisting that thing like a batting twirler, and I was like, watch out, you're meant to go. It was, just, it was just really fun for me to like keep myself entertained, because I don't know if you guys realise, but we shot this movie six nights a week from 7pm to 7am, that were at hours, so it was really, you had to keep your energy right up. And so when anybody was, you know, flailing, we kind of had to pick each other up. And I felt responsible for doing that because I'm sort of the energizer bunny. It's worth noting that Sharni really, really, really wanted to jump out that second floor window. Yeah, but it was like a huge argument. Like, like it's like, no, it's like this big. So they had me do it. You'll die. <laughs> In a way. <laughs> 